Welcome, everybody, to the Friar Talk podcast. Today, we're going to be going over the Padres prospects ranked number 11 through 20. And then either Saturday or Sunday or Monday, we'll have a, another video out about the top 10 prospects. So make sure to stay tuned for that. Um, but before we get into anything, I would like to, to kind of give a little update on Trent Grisham. Today, he left with a slight hamstring strain. And he's had some hamstring trouble in the past, and he basically told the Padres that this one wouldn't linger. Right now, opening day is three weeks away, I think exactly. So I'd assume that it won't linger into the regular season, but we definitely don't want to see that. So hopefully he's recovered, I'd say, from that hamstring strain in about two weeks and then has a another week to kind of get situated. But just wanted to briefly mention that before we started talking about these prospects. Um, I think we have to start this episode by talking about an absolute dinger that was hit by Joshua Mears, I think two days ago, was it? 117 yeah. mile per hour exit velocity. We have Mears at number 12 on our list, which I think is a little high compared to some other lists, but I like Joshua Mears a lot. Hit that absolute dinger. Um, Chase, would you like to get into him a little bit more though? Yeah, he's going to be your prototypical like right fielder or left fielder, mostly right. Uh, if he develops more speed, he can be your typical left fielder, but he's going to be a power bat. You know, he's going to hit those absolute dingers like Matt was saying. You know, he's going to put on a show. I think he's got a little bit of an arm, but if that speed doesn't develop, he's probably going to fit that right field profile. Uh, and Isaac, what do you think about Joshua Mears? Well, to be completely honest, I didn't really know who Joshua Mears was until he hit that that bomb. I mean, that's crazy. <laughs> off the bat, that's, that's insane. But you know, if someone has that kind of power, uh, it, it's kind of like another person we have on this list of eleven through twenty. Uh, I, I believe that they're going to be implementing universal DH soon, and he could possibly fit that role if he has that kind of power. You know, one hundred seventeen miles per hour off the bat. You you don't hear about that often that's absolutely insane yeah no definitely don't um and so i'm gonna go through the list right now um basically we just i just wanted to kind of start out with joshua mears right there so for the list number 11 jorge onya number 12 joshua mears just mentioned him number 13 mason thompson number 14 jagger haynes number 15 brian medina Guys, 17, Esther Ruiz, 18, very exciting person, Victor Acosta, 19, Stephen Wilson, and 20, Tirso Ornelas. So that's 11 through 20, and I'll also put that in the comment section so everyone can see. But Isaac, I'm going to go right back to you. What do you think about Victor Acosta, man? Because he's the newest guy on this list, um, international signing, um, a lot of hype about him, but what's your initial thoughts on, on that signing and, and him as a player? Yeah, so, you know, just a big, uh, quick background on Victor Acosta. I, he's 16 years old, right? Yeah. So he, he's 16. He was our top international signing. And uh, you see a lot of comparisons to him of him to, uh, like, Francisco Lindor, Yon Mancada. So that just tells you the kind of caliber player he is. Uh, if you want to see what kind of player he is, there's a video on, May, I think it's the like time. And they have a video of him. I know it's on YouTube, but you can check that out. But uh, he's five foot eleven, hundred sixty five pounds. He has uh, he clocks in at six six five sixty. Um, you know that sounds like he could be a valuable asset to this team in the future. And I think in the future you'll see him in the top ten prospects because he's he's going to be that good. And Chase, what do you think about Victor Acosta? Ben, you don't see that often, like a true valuable switch hitter. You can see it in the minor leagues. You know they're like, you know, if he comes around, you know. But I can see him playing a role like they say Lindor or Moncada or even Analzi Albius, you know. Him coming into any of those players for the Padres would be huge for the future. And right now he's he's 5'11", 165 pounds, has a lot of room to grow. Um, and he also this I think this might be the most exciting part about him. Six five sixty yard dash. Very impressive. That's like is that like 80 grade speed, right? 75, 80 grade speed right there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, between that. Yeah, so he has elite speed. 
Um, super exciting player, switch hitter. Uh, he's he's only 16 years old. That's that's massive. Um, another person in our sports network, AJ Torres. He uh, has a baseball podcast. He, I was talking to him about Acosta because he said that that's like the guy he was most excited for of like the young players in this prospect list, like the underrated guys. Um, and he was like, hey, I don't know why he can't become like a Yon Mankata type player. And he was now Mankata was a the number I think he was the number one prospect. I think he was the number one prospect over Tatis for a while. Um, I don't know if he's quite lived up to like all the hype, but he's still a really good player. So if if Acosta can turn into that massive that's a massive win for the san diego padres um super exciting for him the next couple of years hopefully will tell a lot about just how what he can become as a player so i'm very excited for him um but we also we brought up a the, the big guy joshua mears the guy that smoked a home run and i think it's time to kind of talk about number 11 on this list probably the guy that's most likely to play in the mlb soon on this on out of these guys uh that's jorge Onya. So Roy Onya, big dude, six feet tall, 235 pounds, 24 years old. He signed out of Cuba for $7 million. Um, that's a lot of money to get signed internationally. So you can already see that he was an exciting player to begin with. Uh, this dude's he's a straight slugger. Uh, he's one of the few guys on this list that, that we've actually seen. We had two in the original list. I think we only have a couple guys on this list today. Um as of a couple of days ago, he had had eight at bats. I think this is like, uh, like maybe like a few days ago, but he had eight at bats and a home run in spring training. Uh, I think he's fighting for one of the final outfield roster spots, and he can definitely project as a future DH in my mind. But Chase, what do you think about Rayonia? Yeah, I think if the NL or the MLB implements a DH. He'll fit that role perfectly. You know, he's not going to be a defensive liability in the outfield as if he were playing right now. Our outfield's kind of stacked. We kind of have a lot of people locked up for some years. So it's kind of just log jam there. So if the DH comes, he's the perfect man to fill that spot. Isaac, do you feel the same way? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, the role he could fill this year is kind of just that guy that he'll come in when the pitcher needs to uh, when the pitcher needs to come out when the pitcher needs a hitter. So I think that'll be a perfect thing for him right now. But uh, I do also think, along with Joshua Mears, that he could be a solid DH in the future. Um, but we have already seen him. He's he got a couple at bats. He did okay with those at bats. So there's only room for him to grow. So hopefully he grows into that role that uh, that we think he can project to. Yeah, so I think that he he may be in, like end up being a, a kind of trade piece for this Padres team, um, but I definitely could see him playing that like becoming that future DH. Uh, same with Mears, but outside of like those guys, who else on this list, uh, Isaac? Do you think are like the most likely guys to be traded? Is it a Tierso Ornelas, he's kind of struggled. A Ruiz, a Mike, a Michelle Baez, any of any of those guys that you just think are are destined to be traded? Uh, I think Michelle Baez. I mean, I hope Michelle Baez. Sorry, guys, I'm not the biggest fan of Michelle Baez. Um, <laughs> you know, he throws he throws hard. He's he's a good piece, but just from what I've seen in the majors, he hasn't shown much potential to be anything outside of a, a decent bullpen arm. So, uh, but he does have a lot of potential. He's 6'8". I mean, you don't really often see that size. Uh, he throws a, a high velocity fastball. I, I don't really know too much about his stuff, but from what I've seen, it's okay. So there's a lot, a lot of room for him to grow. And I think that'll be something that could uh, entice teams to, you know, maybe hopefully want him because I don't want him. Yeah, he's been in the organization for quite some time and we've never really seen it work out. And we've also seen some other guys in the same timeline have a lot more success. So maybe Baez is just kind of a, a late bloomer, but definitely concerning on his end. Um, another guy, I mean, you, you're bringing up a guy that struggles, so we got to be, I guess, a little bit negative today. Uh, another guy, Tirso Ornelas, he has not been good. And he was not good in 2018 and 2019. He like barely hit over 200. Uh, six foot three, 200 pounds. He hits left, throws right. He's an outfielder from – he's actually like grew up in Tijuana, I believe, or was born in Tijuana. Um, 
signed out $1.5 million out of Mexico. So he was kind of a big international signing a while back and, and almost a homegrown guy being so close to San Diego. But seems like he might not end up panning out. Like there's a, there's a few guys on this list where they just have a ton of talent. They're a little bit older, and it's kind of unsure on whether or not they're going to end up being big players. I think Michelle Baez is a guy like that. I think Tirso Ornelas is a guy like that. And that's not to knock these guys because um, I feel like, I don't know, when I look at this list, I'm a little bit more pessimistic than when I looked at the 21 to 30 list just because those guys are so raw and we don't really know how they're going to pan out. Where some of these guys that were former top guys like Michelle Baez, who, I mean, he was what, the, like the third guy on the farm for a while, I want to say. Um, and he just hasn't quite panned out. So a lot of these guys are, you know, a little bit more of like, don't know what we're going to get out of them, but I don't know. Uh, Chase, any any of these guys, other guys that you think maybe have struggled a little bit but have a chance to bounce back? I think Terso is probably the best guy. MLB had ranked him last year as the number nine prospect. So we have him pretty low compared to where MLB had him last year. But I think that's just because he struggled a little bit. But I do think Baez would make a great bullpen arm. I know Isaac doesn't like him. He has like a three, a little over like a three, three ERA in the majors. But I think he'd be a really strong bullpen arm. You know, he'd probably have a lot of deception being six, eight and having a 97 mile per hour fastball. And from what we've seen, his changeup's pretty nice. I'd like to see him, you know, try to be like Fernando Rodney, come out of the bullpen, be a star caliber closer. You know, he's 25. He's getting up there in age. But that's perfect for relievers. You know, you relievers can pitch until they're 35, 36. Look at Trevor Rosenthal. That'd be a perfect example. I don't know about this guy a ton, but did you want to kind of get into Medina a little bit? Because I do know that you were that you liked him a lot and found him very intriguing. Yeah, so he hasn't struggled a lot, but uh, he's 19 years old. He kind of reminds a lot of people of Lamette. He has an overpowering fastball. You know, reaches up to 97, has a really strong slider, and he's developing a changeup. So if he can just keep his delivery, like, consistent and just build command as he grows up, probably he can probably be up in a few years and be a front-of-the-line starter in the future. Yeah, no, he he's definitely a very promising player. Uh, just going through his grades right now from MLB, 60 grade fastball, 55 grade slider, 50 grade changeup, um, and then 50 control. So very promising. He's only 18 years old, six foot one, 180 pounds. He'll probably put in some more weight. And right here, it has his like estimated time of arrival around like 2024, which which is a great timeline because some of those contracts are going to be kind of ending around then. So kind of perfect if he comes in and he could step into maybe a four or five spot in a, in a strong rotation or, or kind of fight for that four or five spot. So definitely a guy worth noting, definitely a guy that can, that can be a Padres pitcher too. Cause a lot of these prospects will get traded. Um, That's just the reality of being a contending team. The good reality of being a contending team is that we're going to get a lot of guys for right now, but I think that he can project as a player that can be really good down the line. Uh, but I don't really have anyone else on this list that I'm going to bring up that much about Isaac. Do you have anyone else that you wanted to talk about? Um, no, I think I'm good for right now. Chase, what about you? Uh, I think we're good, unless you want to talk about Mason Thompson. He's had one outing this spring. It was not a pretty outing. He had one inning pitch, I think, a couple of days ago. Gave up four runs. It, it was not a good inning. It, he got lucky. He got out of it because the guy made a mistake at third base. <laughs> Yeah, he let a home run, like four hits and like two walks. Like, it was not good. <laughs> it was really bad. <laughs> um, really bad. But but yeah, I think uh, other guys, we didn't really mention these guys, but uh, Estra Ruiz, I think he's a trade piece. Um, didn't really talk about Steven Wilson at all. Um, I don't know a ton about Steven Wilson. Um, Jagger Haynes, another young player, only 18 years old, left-handed pitcher. He has a fastball slider changeup combo. Um the, those are the, I think those are the only guys we didn't bring up, but not going to get into everyone today. Uh, whenever these guys are kind of moved or, you know, up or down stock stuff, we, we'll end up talking about it throughout the season. Um, but make sure to come back. Make sure to subscribe, like, review, rate, do all that kind of stuff. And uh, I think it'll be probably Saturday or Sunday. I'm hoping we can get out a top 10 video. 
and in the top 10 video we'll go 10 down to one and we'll talk about all the guys a little bit more in depth a little bit longer video than these past two that we've done for the our prospect rankings but thanks everyone for listening and we'll talk to you guys soon